Good morning. My name is Eli Howes. Can you please tell me your full name? Hi. Good morning, Eli. My name is Navis Doan Martinez. And what should I call you? Uh, my friends call me Mavis, so you can call me Mavis too. Okay. Now, Mavis, in this first part, I'd like to ask you some questions about yourself. Let's talk about what you do. Do you work or are you a student? At present, I am working as a psychiatric nurse in a tertiary government hospital in Iloilo City. Uh, it, it is actually located in the Visayas region of the Philippines. And the hospital facility consists of uh, 700 bed capacity. Mm -hmm. So it is actually a huge, huge um, hospital. Right. And what do you like most about your work? Hmm. Maybe my work is different from others because... You know, nurses, usually they take care of uh, sick people, most especially uh, physically, physically uh, sick people, or they are not uh, capable uh, physically. However, in my case, I am taking care of combative and um, violent, aggressive patients. So they are not bedridden patients. They are just pacing uh, back and forth in the ward and they have this what we call mental problem mm. do you think you'll stay in this work for a long time yeah sure because um i planned to pursue this career in i mean outside the philippines uh preferably in in, in the u.s because i already got a job offer from a hospital, uh, I mean, psychiatric facility in there. And yeah, I'm going to pursue this career because this is what I wanted. Uh, I've been wanting this career since I was in high school. I already look forward to get this, uh, op uh, or to get this opportunity to be a psychiatric nurse because since I was young, I you. am really oh. into mental... <laughs> Thank you. I'm just going to move on so we can answer, uh, ask some more questions. Uh, sure, sure. Okay. Let's talk about reading. When do you read books? <laughs> I am not really into reading because I am. I usually um, get bored when I read a lot of books and maybe my mind is strained if I read books. So what I do when I study is I watch short clip videos because I am a visual learner. So that's the way I can study. Mm. Um, how often do you buy new books? I never bought one, honestly. <laughs> but I have this uh, books in my house. Uh, uh, nursing i mean my nursing books i have these nursing books in my house but those books were given to me by my cousin because she she is also a nurse so i don't need to buy my books because someone gave it to me have you ever read a novel that has been adapted into a film i love writing uh to be honest i used to work as a news writer in a local oh, media here. Um, have you ever read a novel that has mm -hmm. been adapted into a film? Oh, me. I wrote a novel. Oh, oh, I... Have you ever read a novel? That has read, been... read, read. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> I thought I wrote a novel. <laughs> okay, no. Because as, as I said, I do not like reading books. So... Um, if I have to choose between reading and watching, so I just watch that. One. I just watch movies because, you know, I don't like reading much. But let's talk about um, the evening time. Um, do you mm -hmm. prefer the mornings or the evening? Um, it depends because if we are talking about work, I'm going to choose the evening time because I am not really a morning person. In the morning, I really sleep like a log. 
and in the evening i feel like i uh, i have much energy to work so i prefer going to work in the evening mm. and usually it's quiet uh, most especially at night time and no one is bothering you when you're working so it's not toxic at work because all the patients are asleep so it's much better to work or because i'm an evening person and are there any differences between what you do in the evening now and what you did in the past? Yes. Uh, in the past, because I was a college student, I used to study in the evening and then um, go to school in the morning. However, these days, because I am already working, I tend to work in the evening and then I sleep all day long. Right. <laughs> okay. We're going to move on to part two. And in this part, I'm going to give you a topic and I'd like you to talk about it for one to two minutes. Before you talk, sure, okay. you one minute to think about what you're going to say and you can make some notes if you wish. Do you understand? Yeah, sure. Okay, thank you. All right, Mavis. Remember, you have one to two minutes for this, so don't worry if I stop you. I'll tell you when the time is up. Can you start speaking now, please? Yeah, sure. Okay, so today I'm going to talk about my best friend, Julie. Um, she is actually 29 years old now, and she got, uh, unluckily, she got pregnant out of wedlock. Um, before, we used to talk about lots of things because we were best friends however these days because she is really busy of her schedule as a mom so we seldom talk however if we talk we talk about anything and everything under the sun like uh, gossips and news and everything that we remember so uh, if I have to describe this best friend of mine, I would say that she really has a heart of gold because she really loves to help stray animals. And because of that, I was also, um, she also taught me how to help those uh, uh, stray animals. And sometimes we talk about her ex-boyfriend uh, that left her uh, when she was pregnant and also uh, at times we talk about the things that we need to do and to plan for our future and when we talk we really talk as if we really need to figure out the things that we really need to accomplish in our lives so those are the things that we usually uh you know talk when we text or when we eat out in a restaurant to uh, chit chat, just like that, if we have enough time. And I don't know, I sometimes asked her about her uh, daughter. Thank you, Mavis. Who is, uh -huh. Thank you, you've spoken for two minutes. Oh, um, do other that's already finished. That's already finished. Um, <laughs> do lots of people enjoy talking to her? Uh, yeah, sure. Yeah, of course. She's really talkative. <laughs> Thank you. All right. We've been talking about someone who you like to talk to, and I'd like to discuss with you one or two more general questions related to this. Um, let's consider, okay. first of all, friends. Now, do you think mm -hmm. it's better to have um, lots of acquaintances, or is it better to have fewer very close friends? Okay, it depends on a person, but in my case, I am this kind of extrovert, introvert, like they said, because I have lots of friends, but I only prefer a few ones who are like, I consider my best friends. And I usually go out with a lot of people, but I also have this escape plan. Right. So... <laughs> Why, why do you think um, some people prefer not to have so many intimate friends, but to know lots of people? Why do you think they like that kind of situation? Um, maybe because um, 
it is better to have a lot of acquaintances because sometimes if you if you need help, there are a lot of people who can help you, but there are only a few people who you can trust, most especially in keeping your secrets. Mm. Um, some people stay very good friends with people that they go to primary school or high school with. So they know them since they're seven year, years old, and maybe they've known them for 10, 20, or 30 years long. Why do you think that is? Yes, I can relate to that because as what I have mentioned, I have this friend like named Julie, right? Because we've been friends for almost 20 more years because I've known her uh, since I was in kindergarten. But I do not know the answer for that. Maybe because with uh, people, I mean, those kind of friendship been together for a longer time and they have a lot of uh, experiences, struggles, and whatever problems they have overcome in their lives. So it makes their friendship more stronger. Mm. What other things do you think can make a, str uh, a friendship stronger? You need to be honest with each other and do not keep secrets. Mm. Uh, but you don't need to tell your best friend everything about you that you don't need to keep anything for yourself. So just be honest and also be loyal to your friend and do not uh, talk behind your best friend's back. Yeah. So you need to confront her or him if you have something to say. Yes. Uh, let's move on slightly. Let's talk about um, friendship in the workplace. Um, mm -hmm. Do you think it's a good idea for people who work together to be good friends? Mm, yeah, of course. So that your work will be like smooth sailing. There is no uh, hindrance in your workplace if uh, you and your workmates are friends. So because you need to collaborate in your work in order for you to have a great uh, outcome. Mm -hmm. So if there is a conflict, then there is also a, how can they say this, a little problem when it comes to the outcome of your work. Mm. So what can a, a manager or a boss do to try and encourage friendship in the workplace? I'm sorry. <laughs> Um, what can a manager or a boss do to encourage friendship in the workplace? What kind of boss or manager? Someone oh, who what, is... Oh, maybe, sorry, maybe, well, what can a boss or a manager do? Okay, to what can friendship? a boss? Yeah. Okay, so a boss, I mean, the manager should assess first, okay, the capabilities of his um, workers uh, and if there is a conflict between between them then he needs to have a private um, discussion between the two of them and then he needs to figure out what really happened and how can they resolve this one and most especially in my work because I'm working in a psychiatric department so we need not to be uh, aggressive or we need not to have conflict with our workmates because it has an impact with our patients because we are dealing with our patient's behavior. And if we do not adapt that in ourselves, then we are not going to be a best psychiatric nurse. I mean, it has a negative impact yeah. in taking care of patients. Do you think it's a good idea for um, bosses or managers to hold activities out of work where students, uh, where employees can get to know each other? Mm -hmm. Sure. You can do that uh, during holidays like um, Christmas or team building. There is actually a team building in our work. Um, we usually do that uh, on the early uh uh, first quarter of uh, the year so we gather or we sometimes go in other places and then we have this overnight just to get to know with each other and most especially we need to know uh, our new uh, I mean our new members too yes 
All right, thank you very much. That is the end of the speaking test. Okay. What, uh, that was an amazing speaking test. But I'm nervous. <laughs> well, but that, that's, that's absolutely fine. You've got a phenomenal level of English. And that oh. was an incredible, that was a very, very impressive speaking test. You, thank you. Thank you for that. <laughs> yeah, and that's amazing because, you know, sometimes um, I do these speaking tests and the person that I speak to says, I'm doing the test tomorrow or next week or this weekend. Mm -hmm. But you've still got a month to prepare and you are very, very ready. That was, that was really an amazing speaking test. And I've, mm -hmm. I've written down so much good vocabulary for this test. Um, oh, yes. Thank you. A lot of... A, because a lot... I learned those vocabularies from your videos. Right. Okay. Well, that's <laughs> great. Yeah. Yeah. I, I noticed, uh, I recognized some of the vocabulary uh, mm -hmm. from videos that I've made in the past. And I was like, oh, good vocabulary. <laughs> yeah. Yes. But then there was a lot of like... A lot of vocabulary that I think has just come from your experience speaking English, from your job, mm -hmm. from watching series, from practicing yes. alone, like you said you like to do. Um, and maybe we can go through some of this uh, vocabulary and talk about yes. um, uh, talk about some of the great vocabulary you use. So I loved things like, um, however, in my case, um, mm -hmm. and that's, that's a great linking word. So you're going to score higher for fluency. And it's also great for pronunciation because you you were using the correct sentence stress. Mm -hmm, so this mm -hmm. is in part one. You said, however, in my case, so you emphasize mm -hmm. the body. Brilliant. Yeah, sure. Um, I loved uh, collocations like a bedridden patient. You also oh, talked yeah. about pursuing a career, a psychiatric mm -hmm. facility, um, mm -hmm. a strained mind, a visual learner. Um, mm -hmm. A morning person, very nice. Um, like really, really good vocabulary in part one. Um, we also had like good verb phrases, like the, the fact that you're not into reading. So yes. you could just say, I don't like reading, but you're showing a, a more sophisticated level of vocabulary by saying things like, I'm not into reading. Mm -hmm. You also use the passive tense correctly. You were talking about how nursing books were given to you, so to be given to someone um, by mm -hmm. your friend. So that's going to be scoring you higher in grammar. And you mm -hmm. actually made very, very few grammar or vocabulary mistakes throughout this test. Um, mm -hmm. And what you'll find is the examiner, and the examiner in, uh, very quickly will realize that you're at a very high score and they're going to be leaning in to try and listen in to find any mistakes as I was doing. Um, yes, yes, sir. But your your vocabulary and your grammar is astounding. One thing yes. that was I, I heard um, was the pronunciation of tertiary. Huh? Yeah, if you uh, you said you you in uh, into tertiary education. Is that what you said or? Ah, uh, tertiary. Yes, tertiary. Yeah. So I I would. So I think you put the so it's tertiary. So the stress. Oh, tertiary. tertiary. Yeah, I didn't catch that. That tertiary. Yeah. Yes. So, so the stress just on the first syllable. Mm -hmm. um, and I think you put it, you said tertiary. So you put it on the second syllable. So a very mm -hmm. small mistake. Um, yes. You would still get, uh, you could still get band nine for pronunciation, yes. even with this mistake. It's, it's a minor mistake. Mm -hmm. um, in part one, you said much energy. I would have just changed that to much more energy. Because you were mm -hmm. in this t at this point, you were com comparing um, the mornings and the evenings, okay. and you could say, "In the morning, I have much more energy." Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and then we moved on to part two. Part two was brilliant, really nice. Mm -hmm. um, you had a lot of great pronunciation, like right from the beginning, like my best friend. So you really emphasised mm -hmm. that best. And the great thing about your pronunciation is you've got. Um, word level pronunciation very high you're using the right mm -hmm. stress and the right phonemes um, to pronounce the words but your sentence stress is also really good you're really sent, uh, stressing the correct words and using the rhythm of your voice to tell mm -hmm. stories accurately and to communicate which is amazing 
um, like another example is this. You said, well, we used to talk about a lot of things. However, nowadays, so it was just perfect. We used to talk about a lot of things. However, nowadays, and emphasizing the nowadays, mm -hmm. really, really good. And you talked about how you talk, you talked about anything and everything under the sun. Amazing vocabulary. <laughs> anything you. and everything under the sun. It's just, this is perfect. And, it, and the mm -hmm. great thing, like when you're using an idiom like that, is you're using it mm -hmm. perfectly appropriately, mm -hmm. um, which is just great. And you also talked about how your friend has a heart of gold and how they like mm -hmm. to figure out things how you mm -hmm. like to eat out, how you mm -hmm. um, often chit chat together. So there was mm -hmm. just so much good vocabulary for talking about your friend. Yes, yes. Um, and it was very clear that you could talk for two minutes on this topic. You know, you even mm -hmm. were surprised when I stopped you. I said, hey, got to <laughs> yeah, move yeah. on to the next step. <laughs> um, so that was great. I would say in sometimes in part two, it's a good idea to, to tell a story. So if I were answering this part two, I might talk about our last conversation. So it mm -hmm. was the other day that I called her up and we had this two hour conversation all about me moving to the yet in the US. And she was mm -hmm. asking questions about what it would be like. And I was telling her what I was worried about. And as soon mm -hmm. as you start to kind of tell a story that you find that there's so much more you can talk about. But I yes. mean, in your case, you, I think you're, like you said, you're a bit of an introvert extrovert. You've got a lot mm -hmm. of social skills, but you like to spend time alone. Um, mm -hmm. And so I don't think you're going to struggle to talk for, for in part two. Okay, and then we move on to part three. You said it depends mm -hmm. on the person. So I love these, it depends on, and then you you elaborated on um, on why it depends on the person. So I think what was the question about um, having lots of friends or having some close friends? And you gave yes, yes. lots of good reasons for that. Mm -hmm. um, I also liked phrases like, I can relate to this. When I asked you a question, mm -hmm. and I said, like, why do some people have just close friends? You said, oh, I can relate to this. And then you gave mm -hmm. your own personal anecdote. Um, mm -hmm. I would say um, try to avoid too many personal stories. Um, yes. <laughs> in, just in part three. So in, instead of telling the examiner about you, I would maybe t mm. talk to the examiner about people in the Philippines or people you yes. know or your opinion. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, because what you'll find is if you talk about yourself and you give personal stories in part three, the examiner might interrupt you. And mm -hmm. they'll, they'll, they'll say something like, what about people in general? Mm -hmm. They'll say something like that. And, and that will just remind you to talk about your opinions and not your experience. Yes, yes, yes. okay. Um, I really liked things like talk behind someone's back, smooth mm. sailing work, a hindrance at work, conflict at work, um, access the capabilities of the staff, and then another a lovely one, resolve a conflict. <laughs> yes. So, really nice. Again, perfect collocation for talking about friendship and relationships at work. Um, small mistake. You said we need not to have conflict. Um, I would just try and me change. too. I'm confused with that. <laughs> yeah, so I would just change that to. I, I know what you were trying to say, and it made sense. Mm -hmm. uh, I'd probably just change that to. It's important not to have conflict in the work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. And you said, um, <clears throat> get to know with each other, but it's get mm -hmm. to know each other so you yeah, don't yeah. Yes. yeah and I think I think you knew that actually and I think it was just a small slip and I think mm -hmm. if you make these small slips you can still get band eight and you can still get band nine even grammatical mm -hmm. mm -hmm. range and accuracy so um a really impressive speaking test how do you feel you. now that you've done the practice test I feel re relieved, actually. At the same time, I'm so nervous for my examination. This is January. Yes. You said January 5th, right? Yes, yes, exactly. Right. So what kind of preparation will you do between now and January? 
maybe uh, this January I'm going to relax myself. Yeah. But now I really need to study day in and day out for this because this is my golden ticket. <laughs> yes. If, so mm -hmm. with you, what I've seen with people who have a very high level of English is they tend to do very well in speaking, very well in the listening, very well in the reading, and they get a slightly yeah. lower score in the writing. So between mm -hmm. now and January 5th, it might be a good idea to look into the writing test quite a lot. Yes, yes. I actually uh, watched some of your videos about writing, how to rephrase the, the introduction and all. So it's really, really amazing. Oh, brilliant. Oh, I really appreciate that. All right, thank you very much for coming and doing this. Thank you, thank you. Yes, thank you.